Welcome back to our Fast API series. In the last video, we explored how to work with path and query parameters to make our routes more dynamic and flexible. Today, we'll take things a step further by diving into handling data within your requests and responses. Specifically, we'll look at how to define and validate request and response bodies using Fast API and Pydantic. These tools are crucial for ensuring your API handles data efficiently and accurately. Let's get started. Before we dive into the code, let's clarify what we mean by request and response bodies. The request body is the data sent by the client to the server when making a request. Conversely, the response body is the data sent by the server back to the client in response to that request. Handling these bodies correctly is essential for any API. Imagine you're building a social media app. When a user posts a new update, the text and images they send to the server are part of the request body. The server processes this information and might return a success message or the post's details in the response body. Your API almost always has to send a response body, but clients don't necessarily need to send request bodies all the time. Sometimes, they only request a path with some query parameters without sending a body. To send data, you should use POST, the most common, PUT, DELETE, or PATCH methods. Sending a body with a GET request has undefined behavior in the specifications, but it is supported by FastAPI only for very complex or extreme use cases. In FastAPI, you can define request bodies using Pydantic models. These models act as schemas for the data you expect to receive. By defining these schemas, FastAPI can automatically validate incoming data, ensuring it meets the required format and constraints. Let's look at an example. First, import FastAPI from the FastAPI module and base model from Pydantic. Then, create a new app from the FastAPI class. We define a Pydantic model called user with two fields, name and age. We then use this model in a post request handler to validate the incoming data. When a client sends a post request to slash users with JSON data containing name and age, FastAPI will automatically parse and validate this data according to the user model. Let's test this using the Swagger docs to simulate sending data. The request body is required, so imagine a user sending a request body with this JSON object, name John, age 18. Clicking Execute, we see the response body containing the received name and age. FastAPI parses and validates the sent data automatically, checking if it's in the correct format. If we try to send incomplete data, like just the name, we'll get an error an unprocessable entity, with a message saying, field required. Correcting the request body will allow us to see the response body without any errors. Just like request bodies, response bodies can also be defined using Pydantic models. This ensures that your API responses are consistent and follow the specified schema. You can also specify response formats and status codes to provide clear and standardized responses to the client. Here's an example of defining a response body. We use the user model to specify the format of the response data for a GET request to slash users user ID. Using the user model to define the response body ensures that FastAPI verifies the response conforms to the model before sending it to the client. This helps standardize and organize your API. Pydantic not only defines data schemas, but, but also performs automatic validation. This includes checking data types, enforcing constraints, and applying custom validation rules. This helps ensure that the data your API processes is accurate and conforms to the expected format. In this example, we add custom validation rules to the user model. The age field must be greater than zero and less than or equal to 120. We also add a custom validator to ensure the name field is not empty. These validations help ensure data integrity and provide useful error messages.
In this video, we covered how to define and handle request and response bodies in FastAPI. In the next video, we'll dive deeper into Pydantic for data validation. Thanks for watching. If you found this video helpful, please like, subscribe, and leave a comment. See you in the next one.